Hi, Jill here, and today I'm going to show you some of the basics of using your Copic markers. Um, this is the card that I ended up making with my hermit crab image. I showed him in an earlier haul video that I did for the week. Um, this is a three-sided card. All of the images were colored with Copic markers. Um, I'm going to show the hermit crab. If there's any interest, I can show the fish. And this card is called a TP card because it actually folds up. So you send it like this. Maybe put a little message right in here. And it has Velcro closures on it so that this card is actually freestanding. And this was a tutorial on the Norsu Girls channel. And um, be sure to check her out. I'll post the link, or actually her name, in the bottom. So she is a YouTube user. <coughs> So there's the card. I'm going to post this on my blog so that you can see everything close up. So let me go ahead and zoom in here so that you can see what I'm doing. So here's the little hermit crab that we're going to be working with. And again, this is an Inka Dinka Doo dollar stamp that I got from Joann's Fabrics. I'm just going to go for a very basic way of coloring and then we can build from there in future videos. This image was stamped with a black onyx black VersaFine ink pad and embossed in clear onto Stampin' Up! Shimmer White paper. I really like the way my color moves on this paper and um, when you're using the onyx black VersaFine ink you're going to want to heat set that or emboss it with clear. Don't use black embossing powder because this will eat the color away from it, the Copics will. Okay, so we're going to use um, some sketch and some chow. I tend to use chow just because of the price, um, but I do have some sketch from certification that I still use. This is B000. We're going to color in just the eyes. You just want those light because they're going to jump out at you. That's all we're going to do with that one. Then I'm going to use B32 and B45 to actually color the image. So let's just remove the lids. Okay, so what I first do is lay down some color in the areas I'm going to work with. We're going to come in with a lighter color, which is the B32, in a circular motion, and go ahead and fill in that area. I kind of use the side of the marker at this point. And I'm not really concerned with going outside of the lines on this particular image because I'm going to be cutting him out. But if you are concerned with that, of course, you'll want to keep that in mind. Then one of my favorite techniques is using a darker color and actually pulling the color onto my lighter color so that it blends. This isn't going to hurt your markers. They actually just wash right off. You just put it on your paper. So we're just going to fill in those areas that we want highlighted. And just pick up color as you go and add it in. This way I find that it blends even easier. Now there are some papers out there that blend ease better than this paper that I'm using, but I really like the underlying shimmer and it blends enough for me. Okay, so look at that. They're all blended together. And there's a little bit of the lines, but I, if I kept blending in little circular motions, I could get those lines out, but I want to leave some of that in there. I'm going to come back in to the main part of the hermit crab shell. And again, in the circular motion, I'm just going to color in that area. Again, I'd be more careful if I was separating out my colors if the, you know, the whole thing wasn't going to be blue. But since all of it's going to be blue, I don't have to be as particular. We're going to add in the shadow again, kind of to the edges of his shell, along the top here, and then fully darken right down in here. I'm going to add a little along the top crease. And some along the top of his shell. Just a little bit down here in the bottom. 
and then once again blend that out and you're not going to really worry about the center of the flowers because I'm going to come in on those with a darker color. So at this point I want the center of the shell to kind of stand up. So we're going to use the colorless blender. This is not really a blender pen like other companies blender pens like Tombow and the Dove blender. This actually pushes the color away from it. So you want to be very careful with how you use this. If you make a mistake and say you want the color to go back away from that, if we weren't cutting this out, look, it just erased that by pushing the color back in. So actually I'm just going to do a little bit of a circle in here to push some of that color out a little bit more evenly. And just do a little bit at a time and see look how that lightened. I'm not sure if you can see it but it lightened up that center. That's all we're going to use with the blender. And I'm going to come in down here and finish him up. Go ahead and finish laying down your color. Avoid the eyes. Get his little claws. Then we're going to come back with that same darker color, the B45, pull some more color off, and do the same thing. We're going to shade and just a little bit down into here. Rub off a little bit of that darker color and then blend your color out again. Actually, I see a spot up here I'd like darker in here in the crease because sometimes it will lighten some. Some of the colors don't lighten as much, some of them lighten more. Okay, then I'm going to come in with the 45 at the full strength. I don't want to blend a whole bunch. I just want to kind of highlight some of those little lines of his legs. Not necessarily any place in particular. Just I've done it a different way on every one. And then you can blend that out a little bit if you want. I don't blend it out completely. I like that contrast. Okay, so he's almost finished. Now again, you could use the colorless blender. Just get that tiny little spot right there. You could use the colorless blender if you accidentally get color in his eyes. Again, it will repel it and I think you can see that spot a little bit more now where it kind of makes the shiny area. Then I chose B29, which is a really vibrant blue, to color in the flowers. Just need a little bit in there. So that is your hermit crab image. I went ahead and I cut them out with some detail scissors and then I added stickles. I'm not going to cut them out but I'm going to add the stickles in. Just a little bit in the center of each of the flowers. Even the dark ones. And then I added a few little specks. I don't want too much color, but I, I, you know, want some sparkle there. And with the dots, as I get further away from the darker areas, put a little less of the dots in there. Just gives it a nice look. And then I went ahead and added some through here. A little on the feet. and he's all ready to cut out. So once it dries, I'll cut it out and then add it to that card. So here again, there's two of them there on that card. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and let me know what you want to learn about Copics and I'll come back with some more. 
Have a great day.